Melchior. It was an anomaly. Melchior was a hit. He was a new god, a new messiah, a new messenger, imperator of a new order, the absolute utmost. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me start at the beginning. But before I do, I've got to say that in all discernible history, the popular deities of the earth had come from Asia, Jesus, the Hebrew god, the Muslim god, Buddha, and Zoroaster. Never to, my best, to the best of my knowledge had a god come from North America, and Fort Smith, Arkansas at that. I think that his massive popularity was from his collaborative, caring theology. No, that couldn't have been the whole reason. Masses left Christianity and some of the other religions, possibly because of his 2% tithe. Two cents for recompense, he used to say. You've got to admit that he had a sale-priced religion. No, no, no. That wasn't all of it. Melchior made you feel good, and his way to the top made a lot of people believers. Like you didn't die and go to heaven or hell, you just kind of blended into other living things on the earth, like you were one piece of a giant jigsaw puzzle of life, like you were part of the earth. He used to say, matter cannot be created or destroyed, spirits cannot be created or destroyed. He made it sound like uh, that worms turn into a butterfly and death was only a chrysalis that made you into a new creature, changed, reformed, and released from the old body. It was a quick sale for many. I always thought that he was bullshit, like having to wear those stupid brown button-up unisex outfits for the awareness sessions, like addressing everyone as Earth brother and Earth sister. Oh, crap. I never liked him or it from the beginning. Okay, okay, I'll start at the beginning. According to the media, Melchior was born August 14, 2007 in Fort Smith, Arkansas. He was an only child of street people. You could say that he was one in a million. Reports say that there was nothing remarkable in the childhood. He was reported to be half Asian and half black, yet half the world knew him by age 25. I guess he's about 20 when he showed up on the public access cable channel on Fort Smith in his regular long blue robe. This uh, tall, thin man with piercing brown eyes made for a handsome picture on the rectangular screen. From the get-go, he had people hooked. He'd just stare in the camera like he was looking at you for about five minutes before he spoke. I remember that it looked like he was just looking at you and no one else. Then slowly he would speak. It was always something like, The honeybee vomits the precious honey into the comb to be enjoyed by others. Such behavior by another creature would seem repulsive. For example, vomiting is considered repulsive among humans. Yet each creature of the earth has a specific purpose. Reflect on your inner self now, and you will know your real purpose, your real destiny, your place in the wheel of life. That was in the early days. It wasn't long before Melchior was picked up on a nationwide cable network, and in about a year was on top of the ratings. Even the president had requested that Melchior visit the White House. However, Melchior, in the position of facilitator instead of master, declined. In fact, he had never made a live public appearance in all these years. In fact, he hadn't even been seen by anyone except by those in the television studio, I guess. The business magazine said that he had sold 10 million instructional videos in the past year. He was wealthy beyond measure. Additionally, his, his self-help hospitals and ritual kitchens were in about every major city. His World Concentration Day had a half a billion people from all over the globe meditating on world peace and the elimination of hunger last May. And what a relief from the begging mendicants of the last century. You never heard of Melchior putting white stuff up his nose. There was no reports of Melchior partying with the hoes. You never heard of him endorsing the current court-appointed governor, who later turned out to be a pervert, caught making love to a box of tissues. No, Melchior was beyond that. He was a spiritual man. I'm not much of a religious man myself. I always figured that if there was a god, there wouldn't be a government. However, Frank Sow, my best friend, was a big-time follower of Melchior. Frank had bought about 100 chips of Melchior's stuff over the years. He even subscribed to the two-minute access. This was a service for a fee that allowed one to directly speak with Melchior on the UAW, the Universal Access Web. Here's the game. You simply go to your computer at the assigned time. Usually one opportunity was available every two months, and they were assigned by the Melchior organization. Once you were verified and your gift received, Melchior would appear on the screen for two minutes. You could get a personal response for a question or much-needed advice. Frank uh, was paid up for two years of these precious minutes with Melchior. The blue one told Frank to buy up all the stock of Ray Tibby Incorporated that he could. 
Frank made $100,000 on the purchase in the first six months. But that's not all. One could get advice on dating, marriage, divorce, court cases, money problems, and the like. It seemed like Melchior's advice would clear up the trauma. That is, most times. It seemed like for a time that marriages were saved, people were healed of subjective illnesses, back pain, headache, hearing loss, bad eyesight, etc., and the world was improving. I remember last summer, before, before the truth was known, uh, when those million or so children collected all that money for Melchior in those shopping centers. And uh, around the same time, MOBA got her constituents to give Melchior a boost with that debtor for humanity drive. Her TV show milked that yak until it seemed like people had to, no more to give. I only stumbled on the truth last month by accident. I was cleaning out my attic and discovered a 20th century solar calculator. I was amazed that it was still working. I thought I'd uh, try to work it. Calculators, as you know, have long been gone, but people used to do mathematical functions on them. In those days, they just couldn't speak the problem into a portable smath and get the audible answer. They had to punch in numbers and do a lot of other things to get the resultant answer. As I came downstairs, I noticed a 10-second advertisement for Melchior on the screen. His spiel was about the two-minute access. In the back of my mind, I wondered how many people could be serviced by Melchior in a given time frame. And to top it off, I had in my hands the ancient technology to accomplish the task. It wouldn't be easy. No one had ever done this kind of math in a long time. I checked the Compute TV setup. Melchior was available Monday through Friday, every other week from 6 a.m. local until 10 a.m. local for the two-minute thing. Let's see, that's 16 hours, 26 weeks a year. That makes for 16 times 5 times 26, 2,080 hours a year. 2,080 times 60 equals 124,800 minutes a year. 124,800 divided by 2 equals 62,400 sessions a year, provided Melchior never had to eat or take a crap during the allotted time. Now, I figured that Melchior had a billion followers. If 10% subscribed to the two-minute access, that would be uh, 10 million. Ain't no way that many people could get service by Melchior. I prodded even further. If Melchior spoke to even 62,400 separate people a year, and that's barely possible, then it would take you 160 years to speak to Melchior if you were on the bottom of the list. Then it all came to me. Melchior was a fraud. He was a robot. But I had to prove it myself. Actually, I didn't give a shit about the sucker's dupe of Melchior. I didn't care about exposing the sham to the entire world. I learned a long time ago not to mess with people's mythologies. They are actually the foundation of our civilization. Anyway, I sort of bribed Frank to use one of his two-minute allocations. I think it cost me $2,000, but it was worth it. Frank even left me alone with his CompuTV. Melchior was just a few minutes away from the allotted time. I had to figure out some way to... Uh, trick the program so that I could prove to myself that Melchior was a robot. I dispelled my intellect and went into my inner self, just like Melchior had advised on so many chip programs. The solution was as clear as day. The Compute TV screen lit up with the familiar Melchior logo. The Melchior appeared on camera. He opened his mouth and softly spoke. What may I do for you? Without hesitation, I said, Kiss my ass. The image didn't seem to move for about ten seconds. Oh, God, maybe Melchior was a holy man. Maybe he was human. Maybe I was doomed. But when I was about to lose confidence in my ruse, the picture on the screen smiled. Melchior softly spoke, as he always had spoken, and said, Please bring your S close to the screen so I may kiss it. Several months later, some zealots broke into the Melchior compound and discovered the hoax. He was even able to decrypt the chip and pass all the info to the FBI, who didn't seem concerned. He also released uh, the info to the weekly I'm Gonna Tell On You. That helped diminish the following of Melchior to about 95%. He, it, whatever, still has a following. Some people just can't give up their ignorance.